Uh, baby, can I ask you a question, hon? Why are you all of a sudden wearing red lipstick, baby? And folks, check out her shirt. She's wearing an Overstay Rose shirt. Baby, is that shirt comfortable? Let's see the back. Show everybody the back. Turn around. Folks, check that shirt out. Now what that is, that's Fatima riding Rascal, the attack carabao. On our island over there, she's on patrol looking for Chinese communists. Can I ask where's my Janice and my Forrest G? Forrest G sleeping? Where's Janice? Sleeping too? I got two, two sleepers. Why did you put the lipstick on to come down to the beach, baby? <laughs> so, so you won't burn your lips. <laughs> you see the stress I'm under. The stress I'm under with this Filipina. My get stressful. It's dead. Don't every bone his body. I'm sure. Headed out towards the South China Sea. Yeah, we got a little pump boat right there. Somebody's getting towed. Looks like he's towing a Zodiac. Some type of little inflatable. The folks way off out there. Looks like we got a super yacht coming into a longer po. Headed to the yacht club over there. So what do you do with good old boys like me? Folks, we're sitting here listening to Don Williams. Call, you know, sing me back home before I die. And Kevin said, well, I told Kevin, I said, man, I don't want a funeral. I've already did a video. I don't want no damn funeral. <laughs> you know, I want my friends just to get together, drink some beer, you know, eat a meal, get together, sing a few songs. I said, you know what? Play Don Williams. Sing me back home. Play that as one of the songs. And when everybody gets done with a meal, Sing ACDC Highway to Hell. But folks, listen to this song right here. Sing me back home The song I used to hear Make my whole memories come alive Take me away And turn back to you Sing me back home before I die. So we're talking about dying, right? Thank you, baby. Fight to mind coming in here. Wife number one coming in here with two fresh beers. Baby, thank you very much. All right, folks. So Kevin said, I told him I don't want no funeral. And Kevin, man, tell him what you want done, brother. I want to be cremated, put in a large cast iron Dutch oven and thrown in to that great big trench right off the Philippines out here that submarines can't even get into right down in that deep hole. So you saying you wanna you wanna remain forever if we weld you inside a large cast iron combo cooker or a Dutch fine. oven. Well, shut and send me to sea. Oh shit you're gonna be at sea for the rest of for till the end of time. Davy Jones Locker. I'm gonna drop you to the bottom of Davy Jones Locker. But there was, there was one more uh, potential course of action that you said you might want to take. It was something about the shit river bridge. Oh yeah, just throw all my ashes into the shit river. <laughs> I fit Hi. right in. Everybody, what? That's one place nobody wants to be. That's one place I want to be when I'm dead. <laughs> How many folks what listen to my do? boys used to used to throw coins off of the shit river bridge down to the kids down there catching them coins, right? It's historical. You know what? I'll be straight with you. You know, I wasn't stationed here. I didn't know shit about shit river or shit river bridge. People started, uh, you guys started emailing me about it, blah, blah, blah. Well, now I know about shit river. But if you've never been to Subi Bay Naval Base or Longapo, you don't know shit about Shit River. But now I know about Shit River Bridge. 
So a lot of you used to throw coins off that shit river bridge on the way out of the, out of the base. And what he's saying is cream made me I throw my ashes off the fucking shit river bridge. Yeah. You know, I, I, was, I was by there here about three days ago and they're widening the bridge. Yeah. Making it four lanes. Right. And believe me, that old smell, that old smell came back and knocked me right in my face when they were they're digging, they're down there yep. and they're getting on the bottom. I should get a metal detector and mm. go out there on them piles they're bringing up. I'm sure there's thousands of pesos. Might be some Susan B. Anthony's out there too, man. Oh yeah, there's there's coins from all over the world yep. on the bottom of that. And folks, you know there. we're talking about the smell, right? Like, oh, say you get off the plane, you get up to Angeles City, that smell of the streets, or if you go to Padia and you get it, you get walking down Soy Six, or you know that smell, walking down Walker Street. There's certain places have certain smells. Yeah. So what he's saying is Shit River, that takes you back, uh, what three decades, right? Four, forty years Shit, ago. Shit, four decades. My now, God. back in 1979 when I was stationed here. I live in Barracks 8, and now there's like two or three hotels to the to the river. Back then there was no hotels; it was just a big open fields. And you open the door in the morning to go to work, and that smell that river hits you smack. That's the mm. first thing it smacked you in the face when you got up in the morning. Now look, we got some people here that that don't know about shit river, but. Uh, why did they call it Shit River? And I'll let him explain it. Well, it was. Uh, it, you have to understand, even to this to this day, they don't really have the proper s sanitation facilities. I mean, they back then they had little huts and everything, and and it, uh, you know they wa went out on the end of it and right into the river. I mean, everything was thrown in the river. But I tell you one thing, it was really cleaned up, and I give a shout out to Mr. Dick Gordon, which is now the senator. In, yeah. And he, when he became mayor in 1980, he cleaned up a long ago. He got the trash out, he cleaned the river up, and right. everything was up and up when he made uh, mayor of long ago. And that then was in later 1980. On, he, he, moved in, he moved on. He's a senator here now and yep. uh, and runs the uh, Red Cross. All right, so shout out to Mr. Gordon Mr. for cleaning Gordon. things up. Uh, made some positive improvements over in Long Po. But folks, shit river. Look, you go to a lot of these rivers here, you know, and we're not picking on the Philippines, but a lot of places like this, uh, you know, the locals that live along the river, their, their uh, wastewater just runs off into the river. Um, you know, so you make the assumption it got the name Shit River because there's just pipes running off into the river and sewage is dumping in that river. And back in the day when the young sailors would cross the bridges, there'd be kids in Shit River begging for pesos and they would throw pesos off the bridge to the kids in Shit River and they would dive down and get the pesos. And I remember one of you, one of you I won't name your name, my friend, but you sent me a, an email you know from the heart and you basically said that the first time you saw sailors throwing pesos off to those kids you felt so sorry for the kids that you thought it was uh you know basically you know being cruel to them uh, because you were new and then you eventually realized that those pesos are what buying their family rice and you know feeding them and supporting the family and it's one of those where you have to decide what's more evil and it, it's a it's a moral dilemma. There's no clear answer. Do you continue to throw pesos to kids out there swimming and diving in shit river so their family can eat, or do you say that's cruel? You know, to do that and keep these kids in this fucking river in this this bad environment. And that's one of those where you got to make up your own mind as to where your morals are. But uh, I mean, for me, what's worse? You know, the kids going swimming in swimming in the fucking river, which they already do anyhow. Or their family starving and they got no rice. Uh, but shout out to the gentleman who sent me that, that email from the heart, man. I read that email and 
I put myself in your shoes and it was like I was standing there on that bridge with you back in 1980 as a you know as a as a newbie on the base looking over that bridge watching people just laugh and throw coins down you know you came from fucking wherever in America Kansas and you ain't never seen that shit and obviously you feel sorry for them kids and then as you were here for six months or a year you realize that's that's how they buy rice the world's a cruel fucking place so if it weren't for them drunk sailors throwing them pesos off the end of that bridge their families would fucking go hungry I like to add back in the day you know when we're we're on a ship and we're waiting for our turn to come in we're out we're eight ten miles out to sea and we're just doing circles and finally you would you'd have your turn because of the the traffic in the bay the uh, tugboats and they would bring you in eight miles out you could smell it really you could smell it oh yeah we're getting close I smell it I smell the river mm. I mean and then we would come in and and the closer and closer you got to a lava pier and SRF down there you know the stronger it got now a lava pier folks now you correct me if I'm wrong I'm still trying to learn a lot of the history here but the uh, the Japanese hell ship that got sank, it's the Oki something Maru, I, I can't remember the name, folks, I'm fucking drunk. But that was sunk, sank, just off of a lava pier. The Japanese hell ship. That was a... Uh, the Omi... What it was, I just said that, I just said it in a previous video and I can't remember it, but it's something something Maru. It's a Japanese hell ship, but it's right off of a lava pier. Because you can dive this still today... But from what they say, it's more of a twisted, just wreck of metal and shit because they dredged it out. But but that's the ship, and you can go online and see photos of it burning after it it had been hit the second day before it sank. And uh, you know that's another reason a lot of people come here to Subic Bay to dive Subic Bay is because of the history. Now look, if you're looking for pristine water and pristine dive conditions, this ain't the Bahamas. This is not Boracay or Palawan or El Nido. You come to Subic Bay to die for the fucking history. There's what, like a dozen? There's like a, do a dozen or more wrecks from the World War II era here in Subic Bay. Well, go up here on the side here at Blue Rock. And oh, they yeah. Got a, they got a painting. Okay? They got a great painting on the wall. It shows all the wrecks. So you might want to shoot a picture of that sometime and add well, that why to don't, why, why don't I put the camera over there? <laughs> There and we go. and we just right oh shit there. about fucking drop my Heineken on the sand. Yeah, we'll show you the wall over there because you're right, and I can see it from here. It says oh, "Welcome oh. to the Blue Rock." Right. And they have basically a map on the wall of, of where all of the some, wrecks not are. All, but, yeah. yeah, some but not all. But if you're in the history and you're a diver, this is where you come. I mean, they got some aircraft out here, um, just a variety of wrecks. Damn. That dude's about to become a submarine. <laughs> when a girl still wood, still wood. Big shout out to my friend Roger Ridley. I never met you, my friend. But believe it or not, I was in your AO while you were playing over there. But I never met you, brother. You don't remember me. But I remember you Not so long ago Broke my heart to tears On my pillow
This is Monday. This is the flight of aircraft that I filmed yesterday on the uh, on the iPhone. Now I'm shooting on the big camera. They're way off over past uh, Grande Island. I can barely see them when I'm tracking them. 